Hey, I am so pumped that you guys are here on a Wednesday night. I believe that you are not here by random, but God has something incredible in store for you here at Switch, and I'm so glad that you are a part, because tonight we are talking about emotions. Now, before we dive in, I need to tell you a secret in that emotions are not my favorite. Uh, I think it's because I really didn't know how to deal with them growing up. Like when I was a little kid, I was like overly emotional. Like I was that friend where if you looked at them wrong, like burst into tears. And then like I grew up and like the logic side of my brain started to kick in and I realized like that's ridiculous. But I like swung too far the other way and I like shut all my emotions down. And now as an adult, I feel like I've really hit my stride. Like I feel like I've become this emotionally mature person until, until the other day I was, uh, I was talking with a human and uh, he started comparing me to my sister. Now, here's the thing, my sister is amazing. Like she's talented, she's fun, and I'm just stinking proud of who she is. But pro tip, gentlemen, if you want any sort of peace in your life, Never compare a woman to another woman, especially if they are related. Now, he did not say anything bad. He just thought it was interesting that me and my sister have similar personalities, but we have different talents and interests. Not bad. And then he said, but you do seem more homeschooled than she does. And I swear to you, in that moment, logic shut off and every emotion in my body was like, Avengers, assemble. (laughs) And I say all that to say is that when it comes to emotions, we all have some room to grow. Now, some of you, you like emotions, good, bad, weird. You want to feel them all. Like I have some friends who like have sad playlists for when they just wanna cry for fun. I don't get that. Some of you, you might be like me, it's like we like all the good emotions, but the other ones, like we avoid like the plague. Like I refuse to see movies about dogs because you know exactly what is gonna happen. There's a dog, you love it, it dies, the end. (laughs) Why would you do that? And some of you, just even mentioning emotions, you just have this like eternal, internal groan, like, because just the thought of talking about your feelings is so exhausting to you, because you just don't wanna go there. No matter how you may feel about emotions, I think we can all agree that emotions are complicated. Like there's like these intangible little things that I can't see and yet want to control my life. Like you're born and no one tells you what they are or how to understand them, but you're just supposed to know how to deal with them. I think that's why so many of us, we deal with our emotions so differently. Some of us, we spew our emotions. Whatever you feel, you do. If someone hurts you, you go talk about them behind their back. If if you're angry, you go looking for someone to pick a fight. If you're feeling unseen or insecure, you start exaggerating or making up stories just to get attention. If you think it'll make you feel good, you try it, you do it, you give into it. Anything to feel good. Some of us, we shut our emotions down. Some of you, the minute you start to feel something uncomfortable, you just numb it. Binge watching, Netflix, drugs, relationships, anything to forget. Some of you, you run away from your emotions. You keep busy, you are always hanging out with friends because you are so afraid that if you are alone for just a minute, everything is gonna catch up with you. And some of you, and you are going through something so emotionally heavy and hurtful that you don't wanna feel anything anymore. And no, the painful emotions aren't getting in, but neither are the ones that make you feel alive. I heard it put this way once about emotions, like you can't let them drive, they're like toddlers. You can't let them drive, but you can't throw them in the trunk. So what are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to deal with our emotions? 
we process them. Now, before we process them, I think it's important to understand where our emotions actually come from. Yes, there's this psychological element, hormonal, all these things, but at the heart of everything, God created emotions. He specifically designed you to have emotions, not to jack up your life and not to overwhelm you, but so that you could have a rich and a full life. They're from him. And you can see that in, in Jesus. Like, who is Jesus? Jesus is God's son, fully God and fully man, perfect and without sin and yet full of emotions. He was ecstatic when someone had faith. He was enraged when people abused God's house. He wept with friends who were grieving. He was disgusted by religious hypocrites. He had compassion with those who were hurting. And he loved us to the point of laying down his life. Jesus knew how to process his emotions, even the painful ones. You can look at that in when you see the night before Jesus died. He's in the garden and he's praying. And he is so overcome and distraught to the point that he is sweating blood because he knows exactly what is about to happen to him. That is the depth of emotion that Jesus is feeling. But what does he do with it? He doesn't take it out on other people. He doesn't shut him down. But in his emotions, feeling everything, he starts processing it and he brings it to God. He starts telling God, this is what I'm feeling. This is why. God, if there's any other way that, that you can make this happen, please let that happen. But he also doesn't let his emotions overcome him. He redirects them to align with God. And he says, God, but not my will, but your will be done. This is why Jesus is the safest place to process our emotions. Because he understands. He gets it. He knows exactly how you're feeling and he doesn't judge you for it. You know, I think it's so interesting, the things that we won't bring to God because we're so afraid that he's not gonna be able to handle everything we're feeling. But guess what? He's a big God. And not only that, he already knows. And he loves you. He even still likes you. You can bring it to him. Sometimes we don't bring things to God because we're ashamed of how we feel. And other times we don't bring things to God because we don't really think it matters. Like God, if you already know anything, why do I have to tell you? I feel like this way all the time. Like God, what's the point? If you already know everything that's going on in here, like why do I have to tell you? What is the point of praying to you about it? And then I started thinking about my friends, how I can know a friend is going through a hard time and I can know everything that they're dealing with and how they're feeling, but it's different when they tell me, when they trust me enough to let me into what is going on in their life. It's a deeper level of friendship. And when they don't bring it to me, not only does it hurt them because I know they are going through something alone and that they're holding on to it, but it hurts our friendship because it's like, man, you can't trust me with this. And it's the same way with God. Not only does it hurt us when we don't bring our hurt and our pain and our emotion to God, but it restricts our relationship with him. And yes, Jesus wants to help you. He wants to heal you. He wants to be there for you. But more than anything, he wants a real relationship with you. He wants a real friendship with you where you can trust him and you can bring him everything you're feeling, good, bad, big, or small, because you can. You can. And so what do we do? How do we, when we talk about processing, like what does that even look like? Because that's a, like a weird word. When I talk about processing emotions, especially with God, it's just saying time out. 
What am I actually feeling? What is really going on? And what am I going to do about it? Sometimes that looks like, you know what? Processing God looks like going for a run and praying in your head. Sometimes processing maybe for you is just opening up your heart and worship and just pouring out everything that's going on. Sometimes that might look like, you know, writing everything down, writing God a letter. This is what's going on. This is how I'm feeling. I'm learning this right now. I've, I've actually just started um, talking out loud to God. That sounds crazy. I know. Like where I will literally just stop and I will just say, God, I'm sad. What this person said really hurt me. And I will just keep talking until I get to an answer because the things you're feeling aren't for no reason. A lot of times your emotions are trying to get your attention to tell you that there is something else going on. It's kind of like um, the, the warning lights on your dashboard. Maybe for some of you, you drive and, and you, have, you see your dashboard, or maybe you've watched and looked at your mom driving, maybe to catch her speeding, and you've seen it. And uh, what do these lights do? See, these lights come on when there's something not right in your car and you need to fix it. Now, here's the thing about these lights. I can ignore them. I can pretend they're not real and hope they go away, but eventually something is going to break. And how much damage there is, how much it's gonna cost me, is all depending on how quickly I acknowledge that problem and I deal with it. And it's the same things for your emotions. And so, cause sometimes it's little things. Sometimes it's not like the end of the world. Like if my gas light comes on, it means I need to get gas. My car will stop working if I don't. If I snap at someone on 4 p.m. on a Thursday, usually it means I'm hangry and I just need a snack. <laughs> but sometimes, your emotions are trying to tell you that there is something deeper going on. Something that you may not even know is there. So back to my story at the beginning. Here I am, marvel level intensity, my emotions. And in my mind, I am ripping this dude to shreds. He is this small, he does not stand a chance because I've at least matured enough not to let it out of my mouth. But then it's hours later and it is still bothering me. Like still bothering me. And so bad to the point where I just finally had to stop and say, God, what is going on? Because this comment that wasn't even meant to hurt me, like this shouldn't affect me like it is. Why is this bothering me? What is happening? And so I just started to process. I just started to talk about it. And, and, and through talking about it and just processing with God and just figuring out what I actually really feel and why, I figured out what it was. You see, um, my whole life, my greatest insecurity is that I am awkward and hard for other people to connect with. And what that comment did, it felt like a confirmation of every fear I've ever had about it. See, other people know you're awkward too. It's not just in your head. See, you really can't get close to other people. See, other people really don't want you around. You know, the thing was, that hasn't come up in a while. And I thought I was done with it. But what my emotions were showing me and telling me is that I still had things that I needed God's help to deal with. So my question for you is, what are you not dealing with? Because we all have things we need to deal with. Maybe it's an insecurity that you have going on. Maybe it's hurt that someone else has done to you. Maybe it's guilt over something that you've done. Maybe it's pride that's taking up way too much space in your heart. 
Because here's the thing, the things that we don't deal with don't go away. We just take them into adulthood. But if you will take the time to deal with these things now, asking God and others for help, you get to leave it here. Now, you might be wondering, saying to yourself, you know what, Allison, that sounds really good. But it also sounds like getting real about things I don't wanna get real about. Yeah. That sounds like putting in some time. Yes. That sounds like asking for help and being open to God. Yes. Because as much as you don't wanna deal or get real with things that are hurtful, I believe what we want even more than that is peace. And here's what God says about peace. Jesus says this in John 14, 27. Jesus says, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You see, there are two types of peace. There's the world's peace and Jesus's peace. The world's peace says, numb it. The world's peace says, stuff it down. The world's peace says, try this, do this, look like this, be with this person, and you're gonna be okay. But we both know it's counterfeit, it's fiction, it just leaves us broken. But true peace, true peace comes from Jesus. The peace to know that you are loved. Peace to know that you can come to him with anything. The peace to know that he's gonna be with you in the storm. You see, when you have this kind of peace, things that should make you upset, moments in your life where you should be falling apart, you're not. Because you have the peace to know, I'm gonna be okay. Not only does Jesus, the safest place to process our emotions, but he gives us the strength and peace to deal with what's on the other side of our emotions. And all we have to do is come to him. This is what it says in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. Jesus says, come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So what are you feeling? What do you need God's help to deal with? Because Jesus is the safest place to process our emotions. Let's pray. God, I thank you. I thank you that you have created emotions. God, not to harm us, not to overwhelm us, God, but to draw us closer to you, Father. As we continue praying, maybe you're here today and you recognize, you know what, I'm feeling some things and I need help. I realize that there are things in my life that I, I need to deal with and I wanna take the first step and that's just to ask for God's help. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand so I can pray for you. Hands up all over. God, I thank you. I thank you that you are in every situation. God, I thank you that you are our safe place, that we can come to you with everything, God. I pray that you would meet us in our pain, God, and you would give us healing and direction in our hurts, that you help us to deal with it and leave it here. As we continue in an attitude of prayer with heads still bowed and eyes still closed, when we talk about seeking God for help, for some of you, you don't understand this. Maybe for some of you here, you've been doing your life completely on your own. You've been dealing with it your way. But you find out something that we all find out is that it just leaves you broken, empty, and tired. And you can't do it on your own. And here's the truth, none of us can. Because we all have this thing in our life, and that's sin. What is sin? It's the things that we do that not only hurt us, but it keeps us separated from a holy and perfect God. But God, in his love for you, he couldn't stand to be separated from you. He would not leave you alone in your hurt and in your sin. And so he sent an answer, and his name is Jesus. He came to this earth, lived a perfect life, and died on the cross and rose again so that through him, we could be made healed. 
We could be made whole, that we could have a relationship with God, not better, but a new life. And maybe you're here today and you recognize that's what I need. I need God's forgiveness. I need his healing. I need his strength. I am ready to give my life to Christ. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand and me eye to eye right now.